Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The NDP foreign affairs critic, MP McPherson, who, in my opinion, is has an unhealthy obsession with the Israeli-Hamas conflict. There's a lot of conflict going on, but every time I hear her talking, it's only about this particular one. I can't speak to what her obsession is rooted in, but I can speak to the fact that it is misguided and... I'm going to talk about that right now. Every time I turn around, MP McPherson is trying to convince Canada that we should recognize Palestine. And I understand that there is maybe some merit to having international diplomacy for such a country that, like for Canada, which has many people from different walks of life inside of it, on the other side of the coin really it's better that we maybe just stay right out of it completely because it's a it's a nasty nasty uh thing and i will uh say right out of the gate that for a a far left government that is obsessed with hate that every time i turn around they're using some sort of hate slogan or some phobia slogan it's a bizarre position to not acknowledge the amount of hate that is transpiring inside of the conflict that we're, that we're speaking of. So today I wrote to Melanie Jolie requesting that she urgently take three steps to help with the uh, ongoing crisis in Palestine and Israel. One of the things that we are asking from this government for is the recognition of the state of Palestine. Under international law, the state of Palestine already exists. We are also asking that sanctions be put on those officials from the Netanyahu government that are responsible for the violence against Palestinian people. And finally, we are calling on an arms embargo, a two-way arms embargo. You know, what we have seen from this government is a, is a um, twisting of words and a failure to give the very clear um, details on what arms are going to Israel and how those are being stopped. Right now we know there is a loophole that the NDP have been trying to close for almost a decade that allows weapons to go through the United States and on to Israel. Short of telling the government they need to do this or else you would vote no confidence, what leverage do you have now to put these demands in place? You know, a lot of times what I, what I see is that I, I am able to, I have the ability to amplify the calls that so many Canadians from coast to coast to coast are making. So we have heard from hundreds of thousands of Canadians that are so deeply disappointed in what this, the government's response to the war in Gaza and to, to the ongoing genocide. Um, we've seen this time and time again, and so I'm using my voice to amplify that. Would you be ready to make the government fall on these issues if they don't respect your request? Listen, we are going to continue to use whatever power we have to push the government so that they will recognize the state of Palestine, so that they will actually do an effective two-way arms embargo where they are closing those loopholes that are allowing weapons to continue to go to Israel from Canada, and we will also push for sanctions. But would you be ready to make them fall on this issue? So here's my, here's my challenge that I have with this. We have an opportunity here to push the government. If there is an election, and if a conservative government is elected next, We have heard from Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives that they have no interest in international law. They have no interest in protecting the rights of Palestinians. They have no interest in recognizing the state of Palestine that already exists. The state of Palestine has been recognized by 145 United Nations countries, including allies like Norway, Spain, and Ireland. There is absolutely no reason why the government can't do this right now. There is no need for a study. There is no need for further discussion. This could be done right now and should be done right now. The Liberals have not given me any indication of why they are dragging their feet, but to be perfectly honest, they drag their feet on everything, so I'm not surprised. Well, didn't she say quite a mouthful? First, she said that she wasn't going to bother with the supply and confidence agreement to force the liberal government into doing what she wanted. Now that they don't have that leverage, she's just going to demand that they do it nicely. She's got, she says that they don't need to have a study, and yet she voted in favor of having a study. I don't know why her obsession with the Middle East conflict is so profound. I mean, she never talks about any of the other global conflicts. She doesn't mention Sudan at all, for example where the, the atrocities are far outstripping anything that we might be looking at in the, in the Middle East. 
my problem with what she says is that if we were to take that conflict and transpose it into North America, that very same woman would stand up and say, hi, but before I talk to you, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm standing on the traditional lands of the 12 tribes of Israel. I mean, that's what you would have to say, right? Because that's what the conflict is about. And I mean, when you look, when you, if you're, okay, so last October, October is the high holiday season for the uh, Israelites. And when the attack happened last October 7th, it was a, it was like do, basically doing it on Boxing Day or Christmas Eve or something to that effect. But what's important for me and you to understand is that it's the calendar year in the Jewish calendar, 5,700 and something. So they feel like they've been there for 5,800 years. Yeah, there was a, you know, a long 1,000, 1,400 years where they weren't there. But that's because of a conflict that happened with the Romans in 70 AD. And when they, they rebelled against the Romans, the Romans destroyed the city, destroyed it literally, tore it down brick by brick, and took anybody that survived that conflict and sold them into slavery, which they then scattered to the far winds of their empire. So when, they, when the Israelites returned in 1946 after the horrendous treatment at the hands of the regime in Germany, the, the peoples that were established there had adopted a different religion. And understand that this is not a conflict about, you know, skin color or any of the things that you might be thinking about. This is a conflict about religion. And no further, there's no further that you can take a person than to tell them that he might be fighting for what God wants. I mean, you just can't do that. They just will, I mean, the the amount of atrocities that humanity has committed. I mean, when you want to talk about burning hatred, you, you have to be talking about this conflict. This is not a conflict that we want to be sticking our noses into. This isn't a conflict that we have the time, the resources, or even the desire to go marching into because these sides hate each other. And you can't reason with hate. You can't negotiate with hate. You can't discuss anything with hate. Hate never dies. Hate never... Like, if you don't understand that, then you, first of all, shouldn't be talking about so much hate and in, in using that word, throwing it around with such indiscriminate ease. You need to understand that. You need to appreciate that this conflict isn't about genealogy or any of those things that they try to throw at you to make the feel like they're buzzwords. This is a religious war. And I mean, the idea that we should get involved in it based on the NDP wanting to play nice with the, you know, it's funny that she, she would listen, list all the names of the um, Israel people that she wants sanctioned, but she didn't list any of the names from Hamas. She didn't list any of the names from Iran. So it seems a little one-sided in my mind, in my opinion. And you had an opportunity to hold the liberals feet to the fire and you let that go, which is just another example of how the liberal and the NDP government is not only when they had the opportunity to work together, they didn't, but they're really just working against anybody that doesn't agree with their philosophy which in this, in Canada's case, is anybody who agrees with the conservative concept, which I'm sure many people from the Middle East agree with the conservative concept. So it's not about anything other than the idea that they want you to do what they want you to do, and they don't want you to look at the reasons why they couldn't pull it off in the first place, which is a little bit strange. But I'll tell you something right now, I'll tell it right to you. I will support the NDP's position to acknowledge the right the, that Palestine exists, even though 145 countries have done it. So I don't know why one more country would make a difference. However, put all that aside. I'll tell you what, MP McPherson, I will make a video in full support of it. If you can do one thing first, I will trade you. If you can get Palestine, either one, the West Bank or the Gaza Strip, if you can get Hamas to acknowledge Israel's right to exist, then I will agree with you that we should acknowledge Palestine's existence. Because what you're asking me to do, they won't do. And if they're not going to do it, I don't see how we're being reasonable at all. I think that what we're doing without, if they're not going to acknowledge the existence of Israel, which I think only one Middle Eastern country does, 
Why would we then need to worry about acknowledging the existence of the Gaza Strip or the West Bank? I mean, if, if we want to be reasonable country, if we want to be seen as a country that invokes, you know, peace treaties and does all of these things, we have to have, con- you know, concessions made from both sides. They have to be equal concessions. So if you want Israel to acknowledge, if you want Canada to acknowledge, then we, we it's, it stands to reason that Palestine should also acknowledge. No? Either way, that's my position on the matter. And when you when you when you digest the fact that you're asking for something that the 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 um, Gaza Strip, the Hamas themselves will not do, I think you will understand the irrationality of your request. And I think that you should get back to the business of say, of helping people inside of Canada, right? Because there's a lot of people that come to this country from these regions whose families are also in in a bad way. And as a foreign affairs critic, there is plenty of things that we could be criticizing without worrying about sticking our nose in a war that's at bare minimum 1,400 years old. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.